Before I comment on today's gospel reading, I just wanted to wish Eris Domatita a happy birthday. He's one of our technical uh, producers and he's responsible for getting us the live streaming equipment so that many of you from home can watch the homilies or watch the Sunday Mass. And, and I, we're actually looking for people to help with the technical aspects of doing that, because it's just Eris and his family that's doing that at present. So if anybody's interested and you have, you're good with computers and things like that, uh, please speak to me about that. In today's gospel reading, we have this account of the, the young boy who is possessed by this demon and the apostles of our Lord, the disciples of our Lord, are not able to cast this demon out. And so it's like a big crowd gathers and they're all kind of talking like what's going on. Now, now the apostles, you know, they had cast out demons before. And it's almost like they them, themselves are surprised, you know, why could we not cast it out? And in fact, they asked this question of our Lord afterwards. Now, notice the, the father... You know, he too probably knew that the, the apostles of our Lord had been casting out demons, so he's kind of surprised, you know, why can't they help him and his son? And so he begins to doubt. Maybe he starts to think, well, maybe this possession is much stronger than all the other possessions that had taken place in the past. And this is why he says to our Lord, uh, but if you are able to do anything, have pity on us and help us if you are able. And our Lord repeats that. He says, if you are able, is God limited in his abilities? This is what our Lord is saying. God is not limited. God can do it. The problem is the lack of faith on our part. And in this case, on the part of the father of the child. Now, granted, he begins to doubt because the apostles, they had previously cast out demons. They can't do it this time. So maybe he starts to thinking, well, maybe even Christ can't do it. And so our Lord points out, you know, that all things can be done for the one who believes. So faith is very, very important. And, you know, when we think of the apostles, they had witnessed so many miracles of our Lord and very often our Lord criticized them, oh, you of little faith. And on one occasion they say, Lord, increase our faith. So our Lord today, um, or not our Lord, but the father, notice the response of the father. Immediately the father of the child cried out, I believe, help my unbelief. And I think that is the attitude of most of us. We do believe, but there's probably a little bit of doubt in, in, our, in our beliefs. Some area where we, we don't have enough confidence, we don't have enough trust in God. And we need to overcome that. In other words, we need to make the, 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 this cry of, of, of the Father our own. We need to manifest our faith and we need to ask God to strengthen our faith, to enable us to be even stronger in our faith. Now notice how our Lord in response to the question from his disciples, he points out that this kind can only come out through prayer and fasting. And some people have commented, well, the addition of the fasting part is a later addition. Um, in, in some translations, it's not really there, so just prayer. So our, what our Lord is saying is, well, you can't just command, you have to invoke God, you have to pray. And in certain cases, it's not enough just to pray, but you also have to practice self-denial, in particular, fasting. Some spiritual authors, when they talk of fasting, they say that fasting is the prayer of the body. The prayer of the body. So normally when we pray, we use our mind, we use our heart, our soul, right? We're praying. In, in many ways, we use our body, you know, maybe we fold our hands to, to be more focused, to be more prayerful but our body isn't really praying in, in the sense, right? So what does it mean for our bodies to be praying? Well, so often our bodies are 
filled with other things. Just like sometimes when we pray, we are distracted by many things. So when we pray, we need to be focused. And the same with our body. If our body is constantly being gratified by this pleasure or that pleasure or just being filled with food, it's kind of like our body also lacks that ability to focus. And it's so very true that people say that when they undertake serious fasting, it becomes easier for them to pray and to focus. And the additional good of fasting is that when you fast, you're making some sacrifice. And you make that sacrifice because you love the person that you are praying for. So actresses or, or you know, even the apostles, if they were to fast on behalf of someone, it may be a complete stranger, but it's their duty. And in the same way that God loves everyone, so actresses love the people under their care, under their ministry, and they will undertake fasting and prayer in order to help those individuals under their ministry. So it's, 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 it's a manifestation of love, and love is often measured by sacrifice. How much are you willing to sacrifice in order to benefit someone else? So fasting is one of the ways in which we do that. Recall the children of Fatima. Our Lady of Fatima revealed that many souls go to hell simply because there's no one to pray for them. And after the children were granted a vision of hell, they undertook very severe penances as well as fasting in order to save souls, the souls of, of sinners or, or non-believers. And that should be a motivation for us, especially as we, we approach the season of Lent. It's uh, roughly a week and a half away. So it's good for us to make resolutions in the area of uh, self-denial or fasting, prayer to intensify our prayer life, as well as um, charitable works or, or, or good works towards others. Um, yeah, I, I also wanted to comment on the fact that notice that this demon often threw this child into the water or into the fire. Why? And it actually mentions in order to destroy him. Okay, so the demons want to destroy us. Why? Because they hate us, yes, because they know that we have the potential to be with God, but they also hate God. They hate us because of the opportunities that we have, but they hate God and they want to, they want to destroy God's plans. They want to destroy God's creation. So everything that God created is good. Every human being is good. They want to destroy that good. So they, their intention is to destroy us, to kill us, to drag us down into hell, to get us to be on their side, to oppose God. So for example, the commandments of God are good, good in and of themselves. They want to corrupt that. They want to destroy that. They want people to think, oh, no, it's OK to disobey the commandments. So they want us dead, spiritually dead, and they also want us physically dead. Now, diabolical possession is an extreme form of diabolical activity. It's not usually, it's not something that happens very often. So usually the demons, they tempt individuals, they, they might motivate certain individuals to do terrible things. Recall how Satan is able to offer all the kingdoms of the world to our Lord when he undergoes his temptations. How is Satan able to do that? Because he controls those persons who are in positions of power. Often they use their positions of authority to suppress people, to just control people, to you know, amass the wealth of, of, of the people, to live in luxury. Meanwhile, their, their people are starving and in terrible conditions. So Satan makes use of human beings, individuals. And what Satan does, or what the evil spirits do with an individual who's possessed, the evil spirits on a large scale do that in society. So think, for example, how does Satan destroy people today, especially young people? Abortion? Corrupting their morals? All kinds of very explicit, inappropriate sex education in, in, the, in the school systems? Promoting drugs? making use of, of social media, access to pornography, and all kinds of inappropriate things. This corrupts the morality, especially of young people. And many young people, they give in to despair and become suicidal. Not just those who are on drugs, but 
but, but many others do, especially during this pandemic. The rate of suicide has increased drastically. And if you don't believe in God and if you think all you have is, is this world, so promoting false information also, promoting, you know, the theory of evolution, which is just a theory, promoting the idea that there is no God, that there is no life after death, that all you have is, is just what you have right now. So in other words, corrupting the educational system. And so when we see all these things present in society, it's not surprising that the number of atheists is increasing and, you know, they're legalizing assisted suicide and euthanasia because we're all just animals, we're all just dispensable. This is the, the kind of mentality that is being promoted and what young people are being exposed to. So Satan is having a wonderful time right now. He's just laughing, laughing at our foolishness. The reality is that it is up to you and I to counteract this evil that is taking place in the world or these evils that are present in our society today. And how do we do this? By, by heeding Our Lady of Fatima's request. Pray for the conversion of sinners. Do what you can to promote the kingdom of God here on earth. And to a certain extent, even imitate the example of the children of Fatima, who undertook severe penances. So often we undertake penances for our own spiritual benefit. Great. That's good. But shouldn't we be concerned about others? In other words, part of your motive for undertaking your Lenten penances should be, this is not only going to help me. If I intensify on my prayer life, my works of charity, and, and my self-denial, it's going to benefit everyone. So let us do what we can to, to um, be more spiritual, to unite fasting or self-denial to our prayer, and to cast out the demons that are afflicting our present age.